Welcome back, I hope, to Lockdown Embryology. My name is Alice Roberts. This is the second of my embryology videos on digestive system embryology. And we looked to begin with at the formation of the gut tube, which is shown here outlined in yellow because it's made of endoderm. In this video, I'm just going to change the orientation so that we're looking at the human body in the way that we're familiar with it, with the head end up the top and the tail end, as it were, towards the bottom. There's this rather large bulge sticking off to the left there, and that is a yolk sac. So you did once have a yolk sac, even though you were not laid in an egg. I'm going to focus on that gut tube now then. So I'll just redraw that. Because what we're going to look at in this video is how the gut tube starts to elongate, but also how it starts to bud to create some of the organs of digestion and not just, in fact, the digestive organs. We can divide up the gut into three main areas from very early on. The foregut up towards the head end, the midgut attached to the yolk sac and the hindgut down towards what is the tail end of the embryo. And then that very thin outpouching or diverticulum of the hindgut called the allantois, which projects into the connecting stalk, which itself will become the umbilical cord later. Now, the allantois in egg laying animals is where the embryo will store its waste. It's fairly rudimentary in a human embryo, but it's important to know about it because it can be involved in some congenital defects of the bladder. Now I'm going to add some colour to this diagram and I'm always using yellow in these videos to denote any structures that have come from endoderm and the whole of that gut tube and then anything that grows from that gut tube will be lined with endoderm. Now for most of the gut tube there's going to be a layer of mesoderm around the endoderm but not at this point here where the hindgut finishes. The endoderm of the gut tube is pressed up against the ectoderm of the outside of the body and that double layered membrane is called the cloacal membrane. We've got the same happening up the head end where the very tip of the foregut is pushed up against the ectoderm and that's called the buccopharyngeal membrane. Now eventually those membranes will break down to form the openings of the gut tube. So the one at the head end, at the cephalic end of the gut tube, that's going to form the opening of the mouth. And then at the tail end, as you can imagine, that's going to form the anus, but actually also the openings to the outside world of the urinary system too. So the embryo that I've just drawn is around 24 days of development, so around halfway through the fourth week of its development in utero. Now I'm going to draw this embryo just a few days later, in fact, as we get to the end of the fourth week. So it's a little bit larger and we'll see some transformations already starting to take place in that gut. It's starting to look a bit lumpy and bumpy and we've got outpouchings developing, pushing out from the sides of it in certain places. And it's still attached to the structures that will eventually wither away, the yolk sac via the yolk sac stalk or vitellian duct and the allantois which is attached ventrally to the hindgut. So I'm just drawing that there, projecting right down into the connecting stalk and that will eventually disappear. And there's that thin connection to the yolk sac, the vitellian duct. Right, up here at the head end, the buccopharyngeal membrane is now broken down, leaving us with a stomodium, that's the opening of the mouth. Then we've got the primitive pharynx, and this is all part of the foregut. Look at that. Eventually off the foregut, we've got this bud, which is going to form eventually the trachea and the lungs. It's called the respiratory diverticulum. We've got the stomach starting to swell. The liver is starting to form again as an outpouching from this foregut. And then we've got a couple of buds, which eventually will join to form a pancreas. There's one pancreatic bud off the front of the gut and one off the back, so a ventral and a dorsal pancreatic bud just there. Below that is the midgut. Now that's going to elongate and elongate from now on in to form many loops of intestines. And then you've got that hindgut. Once again, I'm going to just shade in with that yellow to 
denote endoderm. So the entire lining of the gut tube and then everything that buds off it is endoderm from that lower layer of the original trilaminar germ disc. Now I want to focus for a moment on the very end of the hindgut, which is a part that we call the cloaca. Now cloaca means sewer in Latin, and it is the way that effluent leaves the body. And it's getting divided up at this point. So there's a wedge of tissue, the urorectal septum, starting to grow down. So this is growing down really in the coronal plane, and it's going to divide the cloaca in two into a dorsal portion, which will become the, the end of the gut, so the, the rectum and the anal canal, and a ventral portion called the urogenital sinus, which forms the bladder and urethra, and we'll pick that up in another video. Now I want to focus on what happens to the midgut, because this is going to get much, much longer over the next five weeks of development, and it's also going to do some extraordinary twisting as well. The midgut remains attached to the yolk sac via the vitellian duct at the apex of the growing loop. So in this five week old embryo, we can see that things are starting to develop quite a bit. We've got some more outpouchings from the gut developing, a little bud which will turn into the thyroid. The respiratory diverticulum is now branched to form lung buds. The stomach has got bigger, the buds that will form the pancreas have also enlarged, as has the bud that will form the liver. Now let's have a look at the aorta. I've just shown a portion of it here, level with that midgut loop, and there's a branch of it which is travelling right down the centre of that loop and supplying that loop with arterial blood. And this vessel is the superior mesenteric artery. So that's an artery that's going to stay there right into adulthood. You have a superior mesenteric artery and it's still supplying the part of your gut that came from that midgut loop. That loop has this upper limb, a cephalic limb, and that lower limb, a caudal limb. And what's going to happen now is that caudal limb is going to twist around. So if you were to look at this embryo from the front, this is an anti-clockwise rotation of the gut. So it brings the caudal limb to lie in front of the cephalic limb. And in fact, what's happening while that rotation is occurring is that the gut is lengthening and lengthening and really pushing right out into the umbilical cord. So this is a herniation of the gut out of the body of the embryo. So this extreme elongation of the guts, the rotation of the guts, and that physiological herniation into the umbilical cord happens between the sixth and the tenth weeks of development. Then all the guts start to pile back in again. If they fail to do that, you can end up with a congenital defect where there are intestines pushed out of the abdominal cavity into the umbilical cord when the baby is born. This is called an omphalocele and it's often associated with other congenital defects. The vast majority of the time though, those loops of intestine return into the abdominal cavity and then that twist really explains the way that the guts end up in the abdomen with the duodenum pushed right towards the back of the abdominal cavity and in fact so far back that it becomes retroperitoneal behind the peritoneum. And then lying in front of it is what becomes of that caudal limb of the primary intestinal loop. And that is the transverse colon at that point. So we can see those parts of the colon, the ascending colon, the transverse colon, and the descending colon. And those positions reflect the way that the guts pile back into the abdominal cavity. So the cecum and the ascending colon end up on the right hand side. Then you've got the transverse colon crossing to the left and then the descending colon lies on the left hand side of the abdominal cavity. And remember that right and left always corresponds to the person you're talking about and not you standing there looking at them. So the left of the embryo is in relation to the embryo itself not to you looking at it from the front. The yolk sac gets squashed out of existence and the vitellian duct, the attachment of the gut to the yolk sac usually disappears as well, but sometimes it sticks around and that's what's known 
as a metal diverticulum and that exists about 50 centimeters back from the cecum along the ilium so it's still attached to the gut where it was attached originally at the apex of that loop and that is towards the end of that small intestine that ilium sometimes that persistence of the vitellian duct might be just a little outpouching a diverticulum sometimes it's a a little bubble which is actually separate from the gut so a vitellian cyst and then occasionally it's actually a tube which connects from the intestine all the way out via the umbilicus so that's known as a vitellian fistula but usually the guts return to the inside the vitellian duct disappears so we've had a really good look there at the development of the guts what we haven't seen so much of is the organs so that's what i'm going to cover in the next video Thank you for watching, please like, please share and I'll see you soon for the next instalment of Lockdown Embryology. Thank you.